So it's Friday night in Saudi Arabia and I'm about to head into what's basically a gigantic rave in the desert. It's called Middle East. It's a four day electronic music festival that Saudi Arabia is hosting. And uh, it's not only officially sanctioned by the government, it's actually a key part of the Crown Prince's plans to both expand entertainment options and bring in foreign tourists, uh, and of course, to uh, boost Saudi Arabia's soft power. So this event is honestly huge. Um, last night was the first night, and according to organizers, uh, over 180,000 people attended. So if that's true, that would make it essentially bigger than the single day attendance for a festival like Coachella. Um, the headliners include sort of all the international artists that you might expect to see at an electronic music festival anywhere else in the world. There's David Guetta, there's Tiesto, uh, Steve Aoki, and some Middle Eastern and Saudi artists as well. Representation is important, and it feels so different when you look up at the stage and you see people that look like you playing to you. Yeah. And for me, that was uh, the first Middle Beast. After every set, I would go back and cry. Wallah, شيء يعني شيء حلو فترة يعني كان ما في شيء حاليا الآن كل شيء موجود يعني ما يحتاج إنه نطلع برا ونحضر أشياء مثل هذه صار موجودة هنا صاروا. Did you ever imagine that you would like see something like this in your country? Absolutely. And I'll tell you why. Because I understood that we are a developing country. You know, so we have to go through phases. Allow us progress. Allow us to represent ourselves in the way that we feel fit. We are very eager to be part of the international community. Uh, but we can't be stifled every time we try to make progress. It's honestly really difficult to fathom how much Saudi Arabia has changed over the past five years. So I moved here in 2015 and it was really one of the most conservative and restrictive countries in the world at the time. Uh, women couldn't drive. There was a huge amount of gender segregation that was very strictly enforced by religious police who would kind of roam the streets shouting at women like me to cover their hair or to wear, you know, all black instead of colors. Uh, and from that kind of environment, the Crown Prince has instituted a series of enormous social policy changes that have really, along with a lot of bottom up movements, changed kind of the way that the kingdom uh, is, you know, what it's like to be here, what it's like to live here, um, what it's like to be a Saudi. So to see, you know, men and women dancing side by side, to see music in public in a country where there was almost no music in public just a few years ago, you know, is, is, is really um, something unprecedented. Okay. تتوقع يعني قبل خمس سنوات مثلا تشوفي شيء لا طبعا مستحيل كان بس اللي حاصل صراحة شيء خارج الخيال يعني One of the other things that's also really interesting about this festival is we tend to see some degree of open kind of display of queer culture, which is very unusual here because again, homosexuality is illegal um, and very much a taboo. Um, and it's almost like this carnival atmosphere of the festival brings that out. Of course, this is absolutely not without controversy of many different kinds. I mean, first of all, m many Saudis are not happy with these kinds of changes, though many are as well. And there is, as you can see by the number of people who are attending, there is a lot of support for events like this, but some people don't feel comfortable with it. They feel like it's a violation of their traditions and their religion. Um, however, there's almost no open expression of those kinds of views because there's been alongside the social opening that the Crown Prince has, has been implementing a massive political crackdown. Um, and so it's a very, um, very little space to express dissenting views in Saudi Arabia of today. Uh, that is part of the reason why a lot of the influencers and models who attend festivals like this get a lot of backlash. So it's 1 a.m. and I'm heading out. Um, that was a pretty crazy party. Um, one of the things that's kind of interesting is that even though um, alcohol and of course any kind of drugs are still very much illegal here, there were a lot of people who were, you know, pretty visibly inebriated. Um, you can smell marijuana in some places. So definitely this is the kind of event where things really get taken to the edge of the possibility of what could be in the new Saudi Arabia. Though it was pretty heavily male, um, there were definitely women, but I'd say definitely a vast majority of the, of the people who are attending were male, which makes sense in a society that is still in a lot of ways quite conservative, and also a lot of women don't necessarily feel comfortable in a space like that that's pretty rowdy, pretty heavy, heavily male, in a society where people are still kind of 
and getting used to even the idea of gender mixing is still pretty new. So it is just a really kind of um, rapid 